have a prayer request that you would like to share? Or maybe you have a question about the Bible. Here's an opportunity for you to share your request or get biblical answers. Stay tuned for a live call-in program entitled Prayer and Answers. Good afternoon. Welcome to another wonderful Saturday edition of Prayer and Answers. Uh, Kenny, can you turn our screens on for us, please? We've got a blank screen looking at us here. Uh, if you'll bear with us for a moment, Kenny is coming here from engineering, from the engineering department up through the uh, lift to the bridge to fix our, our main viewer here. Uh, my name is Randy Smith. With me is my co-host, Dr. Steve Kovac. And we're here this afternoon to host this uh, live weekly radio call-in talk show we call Prayer and Answer. Steve, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing okay. And uh, you're going to be preaching tomorrow. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, over at Looking East for... Mesa in Las Cruces. Yeah. What time does that service start? 10.15. At 10.15. If anybody would like to see Steve in the flesh and hear him deliver the Word of God tomorrow, uh, you can go to uh, East Mesa Baptist Church in uh, Las Cruces. And is that off of Highway 70? Yes. Yeah. All right. So uh, if you're over on the west side of town, it's about a 40-minute drive, maybe 35-minute drive. And uh, if you're on the east side of town, it's a little bit longer, but well worth it. And so you can go out and see Steve uh, uh, live out there doing the work that God has called him to do. Uh, one, of, one of Steve's callings is uh, uh, to help churches. He helps churches uh, get ready for their new pastor and helps them through the process of finding their pastor as an interim pastor. And uh, he enjoys it every time he gets an opportunity to do it. And what an important work that is. Yeah, it's not for everybody. But and yeah. sometimes you wonder why why you do it. But but it's it's if you love if you love the church. Yeah. And you want to see it. Uh, continue to do its work and you don't want it to get sidetracked uh, between pastors uh, which happens uh, way too often um, then it's 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 an important thing just yeah. a very small part of what God does amen and then for myself every Sunday just about every Sunday over in on Lee Trevino Church Street Vista Hills Church and our service starts at 1045 you're welcome to drop in if you would like to uh, be a part of that service. Uh, most people don't like to hear me preach, but if you <laughs> if you just feel like hurting yourself, you can come and uh, and be a part of our service. We'd love to to have you. In fact, uh, uh, we'll be having uh, communion tomorrow, and maybe you'd like to just be a part of that. You're you're welcome to come. It's twenty three oh one North Lee Trevino, and so uh, <clears throat> um, uh, we invite you. Uh, now, to our listeners, uh, let me give the phone number here. It's 915-779-0016. And we're here to take your prayer requests, and we're also here to take any praise reports where God's answered prayer, or maybe you have a biblical question. And so as Steve and I talk, uh, we're hoping that you will interrupt us. And so don't don't be going, well, they're talking, and I, I don't want to interrupt. Uh, the, the, this program's designed to be, to be, to be interrupted. interrupted. Yeah, yes. the, in fact, we we look for the interruption, and if, when we don't get the interruptions, we take a break, a commercial break, just to be interrupted. And so that you all get the idea, oh, uh, they're going to keep taking breaks until we call and we're a part of it. So any Bible questions you have or prayer requests uh, or uh, um, if you have a praise, we love the praise reports also. Then you give us a call at 915-779-0016. Now, um, poor Steve here does not have any idea what I'm getting ready to ask him and where we're going. So well, you do that often. so I know, and I always <laughs> I feel horrible for doing it. No, you don't. Here That's we go. <laughs> <laughs> you get get ready, Steve. Go ahead and take a drink there. I'm going to ask you your opinion on a couple of things. And, okay. Um, so Tuesday is uh, uh, our election. Yes. Uh, I know that there's early voting and so forth. And uh, do you, in your personal opinion, do you think uh, Christians ought to vote? Yes, I think it's their duty. Their duty. Well, yeah. would you expound on that a little bit? Why, sure. What, why do you think Christians ought to vote? I mean, after all, 
hasn't God already decided what he's going to do? And does our vote even matter? Because he's the one who's going to do whatever it is he's going to do. Well, here's here's one way to think about it. Um, God designed government. He doesn't give us a particular form of government that he designed for us, but he gave us government and he wants government to be righteous. Um, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Um, And God wants uh, people to uh, be uh, have a righteous uh, government, not in the fact that uh, it is a theocracy. God isn't God isn't running it. We don't do that anymore since the Old Testament. But the idea is God wants righteousness uh, reflected uh, in 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 society. And um, so we have an opportunity as, as and he also gave us the gift of freedom. So he gave us an opportunity to freely vote because he he was kind enough uh, to bring about democracies in in the middle Late, late Middle Ages. and So and um, do you think that God would say, um, I'll let you guys decide whether you're going to have a godly nation or not. Um, I'll get my work done. I'll use another nation if I want to. I'll let you guys choose. Um, uh, if you choose not to vote righteousness, then I'll allow you to have an ungodly nation. If okay, you, so here, you, here's how I respond to that. To, if you choose righteousness and you vote righteousness, then I'll allow you to have a righteous nation. Okay, so here's, here's a basic thing. God says there's, uh, Jesus basically uh, discusses this. There's two basic commands. Mm-hmm. Love God, love your neighbor. If, if, if you really don't care what your government is like and your neighbor is oppressed by government, your neighbor is um, uh, mistreated. Uh, all sorts of evil can happen because of uh, these kinds of governments. Uh, you're, you're really not uh, loving your neighbor. All right. Now, let me let me ask you this. You know, there's a there's a, a thought in the Bible about about stewardship. We hear it usually when a pastor wants to increase the offerings. Right? <laughs> they call it. We're going to have a stewardship. Has God made us stewards of things? Yes. Um, so yeah. if is the vote really mine or is it his? In other words, did he give me a vote and say, now this is mine, I'm putting it in your hands, and I need you to go uh, uh, be a steward of that vote I've given you? Well, I've never really thought about it that way, but just use an example of the spiritual gifts. Mm-hmm. He if gives you didn't, us, there you go. And so, First Peter chapter four, mm-hmm. uh, he gives uh, a variety of gifts, and you're to use them as good stewards. And I'm of, sorry, but I promised we would interrupt, didn't yes. I? Yeah, I'm going to interrupt you right now. Now you hold on to that thought, though. Okay, I'll finish the verse. All right, later. go ahead. Yeah, yeah. We'll 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 go to our interruption. Yes. And then we'll come back. Good at, good afternoon, Minerva. Welcome to Prayer and Answers. Good afternoon. How are you, gentlemen? We're doing great. Wonderful. I have a kind of simple question, I would suppose. Um, it just got me thinking. A pastor on KLP, I don't know what which one, said that they, Christmas, and I do know that, that Christmas is not when we celebrate it. Really, we don't really know when um, Jesus was born. Correct? We're celebrating his birth and all, but is it wrong of us to, how can to celebrate it as a Christian, not the way the world does, but is it, you know, some symbolic, I guess? Is it wrong to at least do something? I would not, yeah. not like to not do anything. It's a good question. Um, so just historically speaking, there was a pagan holiday that the church thought, let's not let Satan have that day anymore. And so let's okay. take that day from Satan, and instead of doing the paganism, Let's worship Jesus's. Let's celebrate Jesus's birth and worship him on that day. Was that a okay. good idea? You think? Yes. Oh, okay. So you and I are in agreement. So yes. I I kind of do the same thing with Halloween. I I will not give Satan one day out of the year, not one. Okay. And so okay. I'm going to do something Christian 
something that glorifies okay. God on Halloween. And so I got the joy of, of stapling uh, Bible verses on candy and, oh, how neat. and giving out Bible verses. And we did it at the church, and, and uh, we uh, 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 people were looking for a safe alternative to the pagan you know, ghost stuff where they could take their kids and their kids could have fun. And they they received the word of God and they received tracks and, and we loved them. And I will not give Satan that day either. Okay. I love that idea because I stay away from every from that holiday altogether. All yeah. But I love the idea of at least a Bible verse. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Okay. And if you want to do it at home, I, I love this because the Bible says we're supposed to be hospitable. And if, you know, okay. now don't, don't, if you're a single woman, you know, I, I don't know if you want to be opening the door to strangers, but if you can have somebody there with you where you can do it safely, then you're right. opening the door to your house when a kid knocks on the door and you're going, oh, I'm so glad you came. And, and I've got something, I've got a, tr you're saying trick or treat. I've got two treats for you. H here, here is a Tootsie uh -huh. Roll. And also, did you know Jesus loves you and died for you? And, and one of two it. things is going to happen. Either they'll like that or they'll never ring your doorbell again. Either way, you again. win. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Amen. <laughs> so let I us be, let, let's be annoying on Halloween and just, you know, really just irritate Satan. Exactly. Amen. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a great day. A blessed day. All right. Bye -bye. I'm hearing the show. I love it. Bye-bye. Right, bye. Finish your thought now, Steve. <laughs> Wait, hang on. God a has given. <laughs> hang on. Kenny, are you ready for this, Kenny? Knock, knock. Oh, no. Interrupting cow. Moo! <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, Steve. See how I interrupted him with the moo? Uh, anyway, all right, go ahead. See, that's what, when, when you are, we need to divert you from those things. Yes, phone number 915 779 Call in so I don't drive Steve nuts this morning. That's, or this afternoon. I think it's too late. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. So First Peter, uh, chapter four. All right. First Peter four, uh, verse number ten. Okay. As each has received a gift. Okay. So God gives us gifts. Right. Use it to serve one another. Why? As good stewards of God's. Yeah. Of the many full grace of God, or as yeah. ESV says, God's varied grace. Yeah. So stewardship is, is we're supposed to do something with what God gives us. Yeah. And we, we, ha we are, we're accountable to God. That's what the stewardship parables are at the end of the book of Matthew. All right. Awesome. So let me think a minute. Now, I know that those are the gifts of the Spirit. Is my house something that should be used for God? Certainly. My money? Certainly. My body? Certainly. My time? Certainly, all the Bible addresses all those things. I should use all of those. Yes. And, and then the parable of the talent. Yes. That the guy had been given something. Yes. And he... He hid it. Yeah, he hid it. Yeah. Would, I, would it be a stretch to, to apply that to the vote? Uh, in other words, God's given us the vote. I did nothing with it. Um, I'm, I don't know if, if that fits, but, but, but the whole concept is, is you are to... God has given us the gift of participation in our government. Yeah. And I think Other every, don't have every good and perfect gift is from the, comes like from above. above. Yeah. And I think that includes democracy. Okay. So if I'm a believer. I might be stretching, but I think that's good. Well, I, I just, I've, I'm going to have to answer for all of the things that I do. Whatever yeah. we do, we're supposed to do it unto the Lord. Yeah. And so what I like to do is I like to consider, you know, uh, he has given me, let's say, I don't know what the number is. What's the number nowadays? Is it 320 million citizens? About 330. Three, 330 million. And, and, and let's say that half of those are of voting age. Would I be off on that? Is it yeah, less, maybe more less? Than more than half is voting age? Yeah. No, because don't you have like two kids in each home? Not on in a, our country. On average? Oh, okay. the, the, average, the average number of kids per household is 1.47. Yeah. And so, okay, 1.47. Okay. And so then then let's say that there's 200 million voting age that, that have the yeah. right to vote. Take okay. out the prisoners, uh, take out, you know, residents that aren't citizens. 
let's let's say we got 200 million, 190 million, whatever. And you might be saying, well, my vote is one in 190 million, and so how can it have an impact? But here's what blows my mind. Did you see the lottery? There's a 1.6 billion dollar lottery ticket. Yes. And if you buy a ticket, the chances of you winning what was it? One in three hundred million. Somewhere. And yet, people. I saw a guy spend eighteen hundred dollars buying lottery tickets. You 18, literally saw him, 18, or it was on the news? No, it was at a little. It was at a little place in uh, in New Mexico. Okay. Eighteen hundred dollars in buying lottery tickets, and you don't have to spend any money to vote, and the odds of your vote. Um, making a difference are, are are much better than buying the lottery ticket. Right. And yet we would be like the guy with the talent and go, well, I'm not going to vote because it doesn't matter. Yeah. But the same person would go. And, and so that's similar to the concept of hiding. Yes, that's what I'm saying. And I'm yes. wondering, as believers, I just wonder if one of the questions, you know, he'll say, uh, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was in prison... You, uh, you visited me, and, and when, when I couldn't go to the election poll, you went for me. <laughs> I know I'm stretching, but, yes. but the vote is important. Voting is important. I think it's, it's, it's uh, God puts us in a place. So as a pastor, would you be able to say to the people of God, you ought to, not, not just in the civic duty, but... As a child of God, you ought to go vote. Yes. Okay. It, yeah. I, and I think not only as a civic duty, but uh, as a re- reflection of your responsibilities as a good citizen uh, in the kingdom. And then if you were talking to a believer and asked them on Wednesday and you, and, and you said, did, did you go and vote? And they said, well, no, I didn't have time. What would you respond I usually don't address those kinds of issues. I just said that, that you didn't make it a proper priority. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about priorities in my message tomorrow. But right. so uh, it's not a pro- you didn't have proper priorities. Right. I didn't have enough time. No. You, know, I, you didn't. Yeah. You didn't. It didn't matter that much yeah. to you. Right. So what I try to do is vote early so that I don't get caught on Tuesday saying, I don't have right. time. For me, uh, I love voting on Election Day. Yeah. Uh, I, love, I love Christmas, you know, Christmas mm-hmm. Day and the things we do on Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. And I love that Tuesday. When, when you think about human history and how few have, have had the privilege to go and vote and it, and it count, wow, I, to me it's just this joy of, of being able to, and participate, to participate yeah. in, in the name of Jesus uh, for what, what God has provided. Let me give the phone numbers here yeah. again because we really need to be interrupted. It's 915-779-0016. It would be good if they participated in, in our the, show. In the show, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe they don't have the right priority. Yeah. So. <laughs> they need to be a good steward. They need to be a good steward and with call. their telephone. That's right. right. Yeah, they took God's money at $60 a month and bought a telephone, and here they have an opportunity yes. uh, to lift the name of Jesus. So, There yeah. you go. All right, not that we're trying to manipulate you, but the phone number is 915-779-0016. I want to give you all a chance to just kind of put your thoughts together on what we're talking about, and when we come back from our break, I'm going to ask Pastor Dr. Steve Kovac, another question. So we'll be back in just a moment with more prayer and answers. It's that time of year for the Medicare Renewal Program. Do you have questions about your Medicare? Or do you need health care through Obamacare? Come talk to Golden Age Insurance Group. We have experienced agents that can answer all your Medicare and health insurance questions. We are located at 2313 Wyoming Avenue. Call and set up an appointment today. Call us at 915-588-8469. These are our services and products. Medicare. Social Security Benefits, Obamacare ACA, Dental and Vision Insurance, Retirement Plans and Pensions, 
life insurance. Again, we are located at 2313 Wyoming Avenue. Call and set up an appointment today. Call us at 915-588-8469. Golden Age Insurance Group. Call us at 915-588-8469. This is Max Licato. None of us pray as much as we should, but all of us pray more than we think because the Holy Spirit turns our sighs into petitions and our tears into entreaties. He makes sure you get hurt. Now suppose a person never learns about the sealing and the intercession of the Holy Spirit. This person may assume then that salvation, security, resides in our works, not God's, and that the power of prayer depends upon our prayer not the prayers of the Spirit. What kind of life will this person lead? A parched and prayerless one. But what if you believe in the work of the Spirit? Will you be different as a result? You bet your sweet Sunday you will. Your shoulders will lift. Your knees will bend as you discover the buoyant power of praying in the Spirit. A higher walk, deeper prayers, and most of all, a quiet confidence that comes from knowing it's not up to you. And we're back with more prayer and answers. And because it is the Saturday before Election Day, uh, I've been kind of probing Steve's mind here and thoughts on on uh, the vote. And so uh, I want to continue with that. But before we do, if you're just joining us, the phone number is 915-779-0016. And Steve and I are looking uh, for some folks to call in and join the conversation. And it doesn't have to be what we're talking about. Uh, we have an open line prayer request the name of the show is prayer and answers we love uh, taking prayer requests to the lord Uh, maybe you have a biblical question Uh, here we are Um, so steve now here's the next question we asked about should we vote the next question is help me out here who should i vote for Okay, so you're going to ask me to 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 do politics. I'm going to ask you to help me out. Yeah. Okay. You convinced me I ought to vote. Okay. I'm going to go vote, but I'm confused. One party seems to really care about poor people and seems to want to, you know, this issue of social justice and seems to want to make um, uh, people accepted and 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 really fights for minorities, and the other one seems to be. Uh, more about um, things like justice and I don't know um, what, whatever. So, which who do I vote for? Okay. So, uh, if if you're a Christian and you hopefully you you read your Bible, mm-hmm. okay. Uh, it, as you read your Bible, you formulate viewpoints on various issues, and. Um, so there are certain value systems that uh, legislatures uh, vote for and governors uh, deal with, um, and there are value systems that you should base your vote on, not that your parents were a member of a particular party, or that's the way uh, we always did it in the past. But what what are the values of the of the people that you're voting for, and do they represent righteousness, hmm. and will they truly oppress uh, people? Will they? So so one party, from my perspective, is is what I call the party of death, and, and that is the party that's in favor of abortion uh, at any time in any place for any reason. And, and and the other one is a euthanasia, although it's not legal in Texas. It is actually the law in New Mexico. Ten, ten states total. Ten no. states total. And, but um, I, let me interrupt for a moment then. Sure. I know that you're saying that they're pro-abortion and, and for, for euthanasia. But aren't they doing that because they actually believe in liberty? In other words... And, and liberty is wonderful. In other words, we want to make sure that a woman can be free from pregnancy. We want to make sure an elderly sick person can be free of life and be able to be free. We want to make sure that someone that has a particular sexual orientation is free to follow that path. We want to make sure that somebody that... Um, 
uh, you know, uh, wants to be homeless is free to be homeless, and 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 we, you know, let just let people do whatever feels good. Yes, uh, Satan had the same concept. Well, now you're getting mean. Yeah. <laughs> he so. says, and so the, the the first temptation, you can eat of the tree of the knowledge and good and evil because you will be free. To make your own choices, you will be like God. Well, that didn't go very well. No, so it brought brought death. Yes, so and so the whole concept of of this value system is you create your own system of right and wrong based on what you want. So, are you saying the party that is pro-abortion is wrong? Yes. Okay. So, if I can uh, be, and this is just my way of expressing it, they worship death. So um, uh, we were talking about priorities. If we're going to look at issues, I mean, one party really says that they fight for the working person. They're pro-union to to, uh, uh, um, make sure that everybody pays their fair share. And why should this person have multiple billions of dollars and somebody else is on minimum wage? And, uh, you know, why Walmart, uh, uh, one of the largest and richest corporations in the history of mankind, and yet the vast majority of their employees uh, qualify for food stamps. There is a party that says, you know, we need we, there, that's not socially just. We need to fix that. And that's the same party that also is pro-abortion. So how do I weigh these two? If I, if I vote against that party, I may be voting against the working man, or I may be voting against the immigrant, the person sinking sanctuary. I may be voting against these other things just so that I can vote for the unborn child. How do I weigh that? Well, I would, I, I really would, you know, the so- socialism as, as an idea and giving money from one person and so that another person can have it. Um, Wait, that, we'd call that stealing, I yeah. think. Okay, mm-hmm. all right. It's redis- they call it redistribution. Okay. So uh, th- there is a role for government, but the whole, uh, the whole premise of how socialism started was to take um, and, to, and, and uh, so that uh, the worker yeah. um, uh, c- could, could base their whole life on money. I see. We call that materialism. And, and, and so now ask yourself, uh, is the Christian worldview uh, materialistic? Right. I see. So um, when Jesus says, I have come that they might have life, we could start in the womb. Yes. And say, if, so if Jesus were going to vote, which party would he vote for? <laughs> Okay, now you're. <laughs> Jesus would vote uh, his principles, and his principles are perfect. And he and, says, but and he so, says, what you do for the least yeah, of that's these. That's right. That's right. And he would vote for justice. Can I give you a Ronald Reagan quote that I heard just yesterday? Okay. It was from back in the 1980s. Just think about this quote. Here's what he said I noticed that all pro abortion people have already been born. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Think about that. As in his own folksy way. In his own folksy way. He, made he a, just a made a point. profound statement, a yeah. good point. And that, um, yeah, so. If, 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 the, if, the, if the baby in the womb could vote, which party do you think they'd vote for? The, the, yeah. pro, the pro-life the party. The pro-life probably. party. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So uh, we've dealt with should we vote. Now, now, what if you've got two candidates and both of them are pretty bad. Okay. Well, now, now I don't vote, right? Oh, we're interrupted here. Yes. Let's go to the phone lines. Thank God for the interruption. Good. Right? Good afternoon, Albert. Welcome to Prayer and Answers. Hey, good afternoon. Hey, listen, I was just listening to your program, and I was listening to that other caller that called in right now. And, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment that, you know what, um, I think that we're missing the mark here because at the time that Jesus came on, on the scene, it was uh, during the time that the Roman Empire was in full power, and they controlled everything and everybody. And Jesus did not come into this world to address social issues. He came in to address the spiritual lives of people and to uh, pay, pay a price 
uh, for your redemption. So uh, the fact is you need to go out and vote because that's part of the process here in the United States. And uh, whether you do it, uh, whatever you do in all things, do all things uh, to honor the Lord. And it doesn't, and if you don't, <clears throat> and if you need to be, get into a conversation about, uh, you know, uh, semantics about what's right and wrong and, uh, you know, people that have money and don't have money, you know, we had the same uh, social stratus when Jesus was here. He didn't address it. So I don't think that you guys should bother addressing social issues because of the fact that we're dealing with the spirit. We're dealing with spiritual things, not material things. And that's what Jesus came to do. And that's, you know, I, I think that going down that bunny trail is just going to lead to problems. Just yeah. uh, so Albert, stick to the fact. Albert, so we were speaking in a kind of a facetious manner. We were prese okay. I was presenting things that people say so that we could come back and say exactly what you're talking about. There's only one issue right now on the ballot as far as I'm concerned as a believer in Jesus Christ and as an American, and it is abortion. That that, that is the one that, um, that defines, I would not care, uh, no. And also, Albert, I'm out well, there on I'm out there right. on a plank right now, and I knew this when I started the conversation, and I can already hear the saw going on to cut it off behind me. But I'm just going to continue. If no, it, no, no, if, but let me just say this: you're absolutely if, right. if, if you're it, absolutely right. okay, Albert, let me just make the statement though, and thank you. If it were a socialist that were going to end abortion in the United States, I would vote for them. That's how pro that's how strongly I feel about this issue of killing babies that I, I wouldn't care who it was that's going to end abortion um, uh, short of Satan himself <laughs> okay so well, you know, I, that's the issue I to me with that because yeah. um, you know uh, I'll tell you what and th that was one of the reasons that the, that the Lord uh, came and judged uh, the northern kingdom yes of Israel because they had turned to uh, they had uh, turned to uh, those got the bail yeah. and they were sacrificing their kids i think and jeremiah 24 yeah. yeah yeah so and you know what and he, he said enough so yeah this and country, so this, we're trying to say what we're trying to say albert what we're trying to say in a gentle way but to just say it if you if you have a vote and you are a believer in jesus christ you need to go vote on tuesday and you need to go vote a pro-life whichever party that is vote pro-life that's what I'm saying. Well, you're absolutely right, and um, I'm I'm going to go out there and vote on Tuesday. But you know, I just thought that that person was talking about you know the, the you know in other words, well, am I going to uh, vote my vote vote this way only to save children? And what about the other things? Hey, you know what? Vote vote the way Jesus would want you to vote, right. and that's it. And that's what we, that, and that was Steve and I talking, and I was kind of being the devil's advocate. I was saying, well, what if this, so that Steve could say, those oh, things okay. Those things don't matter. <laughs> okay. Well, you but, know what? You, you did a great job. You need to put those horns away now. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you, Albert. All right. All right God bless bye. you. Bye-bye. Uh, did I have horns on? No, no, I did. Oh, you did. I was okay. the one bringing up all the social issues, and yes. he thought it was a caller. Yeah, so, so and, and you notice my hesitation in well, discussing things. Because you and I avoid politics like the plague. Yeah. Um, we stay focused on Christ and, uh, uh, and, and on his word, and we stay focused on the spiritual issues. And right now, I'm taking us into this issue, which is which is difficult for you and I to deal with, because we want to stay focused on who is Jesus. We don't want to, We want to stay focused on the eternal condition of the soul. However, there are certain physical things that He requires of us, and I would just say, in the United States of America, if you're a believer, one of those things is 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 your stewardship over your vote. That's what I'm trying to say. Sure, I, and I understand that. So the idea here is is we need to vote, but we, we you see what happens, and so every time we, we start talking politics, and I, and I mention I've been at a lot of churches, I see so much politics yeah. in the church. Yeah, we don't want that either. And, and that's even worse. Yeah. Um, I, I remember, Steve, one time I was asked to uh, um, to preach. Uh, it was a church on the Northeast, and it was predominantly 
retired military who were in attendance. And my statement to them of patriotism is not Christianity. Loving your country is not Christian. Um, loving Christ is Christian. Uh, because a lot of people get that confused. They get patriotism. Well, this is godly. Um, or uh, And and to, to speak, and I thought they were going to throw me out, by the way. But it was something that needed to be said because they were not living a Christian life, but they felt that they were godly because they stood up and took their hat off when the Star Spangled Banner sang, and they're like, so look, we're godly people. Well, no, you're not, because... What have you done with Jesus Christ? So politics usually can, can, can confuse things, and we don't want that in yeah, the church. And we, and we tend to mix that. But while you mention that, let's, let's also mention that uh, Veterans Day is coming, and let us give thanks to, uh, our veterans. to our veterans. Yeah. Do you see how my hat's on backwards right now? Yes. It's because of Veterans Day. Yeah. Well, let me explain why. Somebody gave me this hat, and it's got this pin on it that says veteran mm -hmm. and when I wear it to the front and put the headphones on it pokes me right in the <laughs> in the top of my head okay. so I've got my veterans pin in the back right now yeah. so I, yeah that's why I'm just driving you nuts today aren't I Steve yes that that really didn't need to be go on the air <laughs> yeah. no I'll show it to you later no, that's we'll okay no, we're, we'll be fine <laughs> all right I'm going to ask you another question when we come back Okay, uh, but, but to avoid all these questions, call. you need to call and, be, and interrupt, please. Yes, please interrupt Randy. The phone number is 915-779-0016. It's an open uh, topic, or you can join us in what we're discussing. And, of course, we love prayer requests. And I've got one here in front of me that we'll get to in just a moment. Um, um, but the reason why we're talking this way is because I just believe Tuesday is an important day. And uh, so I'm trying to encourage, implore, entreat, beg, beg, ask. This time we're begging that you go and vote and your phone calls. We'll be yeah. back in a moment with more prayer and answers. Don Stevens here at MercyShips.org with today's Mercy Minute. Our hospital ships are run by professional volunteers, but there's one group that brings a unique perspective, the children of the volunteers on board. Lewis came to the Africa Mercy with his parents. At two years old, you might think there wasn't much for him to contribute, but you're wrong. Lewis became a bridge between cultures while with his parents in Senegal. When they were in town, the people would smile and talk to Lewis. After a few days, they knew his name, and soon friendships began to form. The power of Lewis' smile was also evidenced on the ship. After coming out of an intense surgery or a long shift in the engine room, our crew can be exhausted with all the responsibility. But God uses children to bring joy, energy, and life. At Mercy Ships, God doesn't just call individuals. He calls families. If you and your family believe you're being called to serve, visit mercyships.org slash volunteer. Shalom, I'm Mitch Glazer, president of Chosen People Ministries. The Jewish people have a word we recite during Passover, but right now is an appropriate time also. The word is dayenu, translated, it would have been enough. Meaning, if God had only done this for us, the deliverance from Egypt, it would have been enough. But he went further, he always goes further. If God had only allowed the Messiah to be born, that would have been enough. But again, he went further. Yeshua took our sin upon himself and carried it to Calvary. He overcame death so that all who believe can have everlasting life. God himself did this because we could never do it. And now because of the Messiah Jesus, God made flesh, the conqueror of death, we can all say, Dayenu, what he did was enough. To discover the Jewish heritage of your Christian faith, visit Chosen People Ministries at chosenpeople.com slash radio. And we are back with more prayer and answers. Um, we you, we need you to call in and interrupt me because I'm driving Steve nuts here today, and he could use a, there's the word, Steve, uh, kiononia. Uh, koinonia. Ko koinonia. Yeah. Kiononia? No, koinonia. <laughs> koinonia. We that means fellowship. We were discussing, and that's the word, word for participation. So it, it, when, when it's one of the several words for participation. But this is the word that's used in First Corinthians chapter ten. Yes. When that's Paul a, is saying you participate. Yeah, in and, and that's the key text. Yeah. Koinonia. Upon, yeah. 
koinonia is the yep. Greek word we were right. talking about. And, and why do we bring that up? I'll, I'll sh- now, with the next question, I'll explain why that word came up, koinonia. Steve, you've shared with me before that since COVID uh, and uh, uh, that you're, you've noticed that change in your students at the university level. Yes. Something has changed in them uh, since school has come back and that it, it makes teaching very difficult for you. What is it that, that uh, has changed? Participation. The participation. What do they do? What's the class look like now? They're just, it's not that they don't listen, and, and I'm glad that they do listen. I, could tell, I can tell the difference for, from students who listen and students who don't, and we've always had a small group that doesn't listen. But uh, even the group that would normally participate stops, partic- has stopped participating. When you say participating, what do you mean? They Answering are, they questions. Are, oh, discussion. Asking questions. Okay, discussion. Um, joining the conversation. Joining the conversation. Uh, one, even, that it, makes it difficult for you as a teacher. Well, it makes it harder on the student mm. because how do I know what the student is thinking about? Right. And and so what I always tell them that I find to be a universal truth is um, if if someone else, somebody has a question, that means somebody else does as well. Yeah. And how am I supposed to know? Uh, sometimes I can, I try to speculate, but how am I supposed to know what they're struggling with? Right. If they don't communicate, yeah. how am I supposed to know um, that I need to explain something further or that uh, th- they have a really bad disagreement with me, which they're supposed to express, and I don't hear much of that anymore. Right. Now, um, kind of the same thing in our, in our radio show here or in church. Um, when, when there's a fellowship of believers together and, the, and, and other people will join in with the conversation, you get to, you know, you're sharing. Yeah. Um, when, when a person won't participate, when they, when they won't um, uh, share their thoughts, they're actually, it's, it's, they're, they're withholding something that belongs to to all of us in a manner of speaking we're supposed to be nurturing one another encouraging one another sharing with one another and we've created this culture of consumerism where you have somebody who's always giving and the consumer is consuming it it can't work that way particularly in the kingdom everyone is supposed to koinonia supposed to participate i'm sorry minerva's back on the line again Good afternoon once again, Minerva, and uh, thank you for interrupting us. Oh, no, I'm enjoying the so, the show so much. I just wanted to comment that I really love the explanation, you guys, how you were explaining uh, if you talk to somebody, and I love that. And then I wanted to say, I tell my daughter, I actually took her, she's 21, and I said it's very important for us to vote. And so for us, it's just what you said. It's, it is what it, whatever. I get all, there's a lot of different points about a lot of things but for me it is all about the abortion yeah. that's it yeah and so when and that's solved we'll look at something else you know exactly. when, when that's exactly. solved then we'll look at other things but until that's solved that's the issue and i yeah, hate to hate to throw mud on that but that's not going to get solved yeah and yeah. the baby in the womb is the most helpless and yeah. we are supposed to help the most helpless the most vulnerable yeah. and i think it is our job to do that and so thank you so much for you guys pointing out what you're pointing out because we need to get out there and we need to vote and i hope somebody else calls because i feel bad calling twice but i wanted to say <laughs> thank you so much yeah. and the joke oh thank you yeah. finally a joke oh finally. see that steve so thank you so much poor steve <laughs> don't encourage me there but okay god bless <laughs> bye bye god bless you bye bye so today we were at the please no not another joke okay i'll leave it okay i'll leave it alone I just, there was some teenagers there, and I asked them that question if they were familiar with Apostles' Creed. <laughs> Please don't do <laughs> and that. And they said yes, and I said, was he the guy who fought Rocky? And they face-palmed exactly like you did. They're like, Pastor, please go away. <laughs> so I annoy a lot of people. Uh, and so anyway, we were talking about the participation issue, and I think uh, using your classroom like that as, as a microcosm of the problem. Um, 
And why do you think they won't participate now? Because something happened to, to some of them as a result of COVID. They shut down, didn't they? They shut down. And I, I can't explain because I don't know why it occurred because as soon as I was able to get out, I was out. Yeah. And um, I was just, in fact, I was telling the group, I was, uh, the discussion group we had this morning, I said, when we had COVID, you know, uh, I was out three weeks into COVID because um, I got per- permission yeah. and I had to, I, act, I literally well, had were, to call the state of New Mexico yeah, and you say. You were in New Mexico. Yeah, which was and I worse. had to say, um, y- you, you all are closing everything. Let's consider this for a minute, Steve, just at the big, because we don't have a whole lot of time. Let's just let's just kind of chase this down for a moment. I'll just share my thoughts, because ever since you told me about that, I've thought about it. And, and do you remember, you know, when we read in the in the Bible and God created Adam and the next thing he says is it's not good for man to be alone. We killed a lot of people spiritually with covid by isolating them by removing that that community in the classroom, by shutting that down, it it just, um, it broke a lot of people. And you can see the suicide rate is off the chart right now. The test scores of children, and, and I'm not saying, you know, the people who shut down were trying to do anything bad. I'm just, once again, it just points out that God is, that he is good, and his ways are good. He's the one who invented community and the koinonia in the book of Genesis right at the beginning. It's not good for man to be alone. Uh, And quite frankly, it is the same thing in the church. It is not good for the people to not participate. And and it's not just in their offerings, but to open open their mouth and share something from their heart, it it encourages and strengthens and actually builds unity in the body of Christ. And it needs to happen too. So that's the, absolutely. And so one of the great one of the great tragedies in addition to the suicide and the lack of development of kids and uh, um, the, the psychological problems that uh, we're, we're not going to know the full extent of that for, for decades. decades. Yeah. Um, we'll see what happens when they, a lot of these kids grow up, but it's not going to be good because it's permanent learning loss and it's permanent social loss. Right. But uh, it, what it did to the church, and uh, we're, we're starting to compromise again, what we did to the church was uh, I, can, I can worship at home. Right. I love the fact that Greg Abbott declared the church to be essential. Yes, and That's, not only not only that, it's now a constitutional amendment in the, in the te- state of Texas. Yeah, that you can't shut down churches as uh, unless you shut down other businesses, if, all businesses basically. Please forgive me, but I need to interrupt you again. Good afternoon, Virginia, and welcome to Prayer and Answers. Kenny's still in there doing the the, the knock knock joke. <laughs> How are you doing, Virginia? Well, doing doing pretty good. But I did have to go for um, the procedure, and I would like for you to pray uh, about the results that I won't get for several days now. I have to go for one more procedure. Mm. Okay. Um, I will right now. Before I do, I want to share a story with you, okay? Uh, yes. My grandson went and had a blood test done and, and a very serious illness. He had a blood des- test done in the morning. Now, this is, and this is in no way exaggeration. This actually happened, and my grandson's mother is a doctor and was there and watched it all happen. He had a procedure, a, a blood test done in the morning that diagnosed that he had a particular illness that was very serious, and the church prayed and they did another blood test in the afternoon, and the illness was 100% completely gone. Um, Wow. Yeah, so, uh, because somebody may be going, well, you've already had the procedure, shouldn't we have prayed prayed beforehand? Nope, (laughs) because God is above time, and God is, is, uh, he is sovereign and can do whatever. So yes, I will pray for you, and you put your trust in God, okay? 
Okay. All right, let me pray for you right now, okay? Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for our sister, Virginia. The Lord, uh, I know that she's not real young. I know that 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 her life uh, at, at this stage, that there's lots of things that can happen with her body and needs to, uh, for medicine and, and, um, and, and for health. And so, Father... Um, she's got she's waiting on some results I pray first of all in the name of Jesus that you would give her peace and that she would just rest knowing that you are sovereign the second thing Lord I pray that you would touch her body and heal and I pray father that these results would come back favorable in Jesus name amen oh, okay. thank you so very very much you're welcome Virginia um, if, if there is time I have a question yes there is uh, I don't know the place in the Bible, but something that has puzzled me is um, this man gave a dinner, invited numerous people, and they made excuses as mm. to why they could not attend. Yeah. So then he, he tells, I think, the servant, go out there and, and bring anyone that, that you find out there. But And, and he does, but then he... Uh, he criticizes someone that came. Yeah, you didn't have wedding not, wedding clothes on. Yeah, the proper attire, and I thought, okay, if if you're homeless and you're out on the street, how could you have sure wedding attire? All right, so I'm going to turn this question over to Steve, but first, let me just set this up, okay? Jesus was the one telling the story, and it's a parable. In other words, it's. It's not an event that actually happened, and it wasn't that there was, that this had to do with homelessness, okay? So this is all spiritual, okay? And now Steve will, will explain to you what Jesus was teaching with that parable, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead, Steve. Okay, so when he, she started talking, I thought this was a parable of the Great Banquet. And it's but not it's the one where they didn't have the wedding. Yes, clothes. So, but, but it's the one where they have the wedding clothes. So uh, I'm I'm searching in my mind for wh where that is. But um, I, I'm very familiar with it. Yeah. So um, the people were invited, and uh, they refuse. And somebody else who is invited, um, um, uh, it, it comes, but he comes unprepared. Okay, so when when you come to a wedding, you have clothes, right? And and so yeah. you wear you wear what's appropriate to the occasion. When when Jesus is inviting him to the wedding, it's 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 the wedding, it's a spiritual analogy, and the spiritual analogy has to do with someone who is clothed with 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 God's righteousness. And, and and so the idea is they are they're 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 coming and they're they're not prepared because they haven't responded to Jesus. So yeah, let me so let me now my turn. Okay. Um, so Virginia, let me explain this to you very quickly. Okay. The Bible says mm -hmm. that all of our our sins are like filthy rags. Would you agree that you've been a sinner in your life? Yes. All right. So you were clothed with filthy rags, all right? Mm -hmm. Now the Bible also talks to us about Jesus placing his righteousness upon us. So this is the wedding clothes, it's Christ's righteousness. So now how do I get rid of my filthy rags and get Jesus's righteousness, do you know? No. You ask him. Jesus died on the cross to make that happen. On the cross, he took your sins. And at the same time, he fulfilled all of the things that the law required. He lived a righteous life. And so salvation is a gift of God. Are you still with me, Virginia? The only way that you can get it is you come to Jesus first and say, I'm a sinner. Look at my clothes. Look at my filthy rags. This is what I dressed myself with. And I need a Savior. And, and, Jesus, and, and you ask him, you repent of your sins, and you, for, you ask for forgiveness. And then at the same time, you say, and, and Lord, I recognize that, that you 
are the only one who has lived perfectly. And I want to ask you, will you give me salvation? Salvation is by grace. It's a gift of God. This man went to the wedding feast, which represents the heavens, when, when God and his church are together, and this man had never come there through Jesus. He tried to get in on his own merits, or he tried to get in by obeying the laws, or he tried to get in by being baptized in a particular church. In a, in a spiritual sense, but he, he didn't have the one thing that was free. If, if the homeless person came and Jesus says to the homeless person, here, I've got these wedding garments for you to put on, and the homeless person said, I don't want your wedding garments. All I want is that food. He would be cast out, wouldn't he? Do you see? It's not that the man didn't come having been properly dressed. The man refused to take the clothing that Christ was offering to him. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so, so you think about it, think about parables and and so the, think about the spiritual point that it's making. The only way that you can get into that wedding banquet and not be cast into outer darkness, Virginia, is you come to Jesus. You come as what we call a supplicant. You come asking, Lord please save me and when you do that he says any who call on me I will in no way cast out I won't throw you out of the wedding banquet do you see what I mean you need a savior yeah. okay and that's yeah. what Je that's why Jesus died on the cross was for your sins and all you have to do is say Lord I'm sorry for my sins and I want your righteousness will you please save me and be my Lord okay okay and then you'll be there at that wedding banquet and I'll see you there <laughs> yeah we'll see each other there all right God bless you Virginia right. God bless you as well all right bye Thank bye, you. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. bye well she read her Bible yeah and she read about a homeless guy that was thrown out because he didn't have clothes and yep. had the question yeah, and, and Kenny was nice enough to play on the screen. It's Matthew 22, 1 to 14. Well, thank you, Kenny. And you're welcome to do that knock-knock joke whenever you want to. But not on the air. Yeah, but I think um, what we shared with Virginia is of vital importance. People may be wondering, you know, maybe they're listening to the radio and going, I want to be a Christian. Uh, how do I get to heaven? I do it by listening to Christian radio. No, you need to trade your clothes. You are homeless. You are homeless. You need to come to Christ in that condition and say, Lord, please save me and uh, receive him as your Lord, meaning as your, as your king, as the one who has the right to command you and you begin obeying him. But the first step is obeying him in receiving him as savior and repenting of your sins. And that's it for this edition of Prayer and Answers. And uh, we, uh, if the Lord tarries, we will see you, or, or we'll, you'll hear us next week with more conversation. God bless. Thank you for listening to Prayer and Answers presented each Saturday afternoon at 1.30. Tune in again next week at the same time for Prayer and Answers. Jesus is the way.